Moving now into the final major topic, which is data analysis and probability and statistics, let's talk about charts and graphs questions. Now, obviously, charts and graphs questions can look in many different ways and ask many different kinds of things. So I can't give you an overview of all the kinds of charts and graphs questions you might see. All I'm going to do in this video is show you some of the kinds of ch charts you may see, how you can read them, and then I'll leave the actual questions to the Math Tactics series. So make sure you check that out. The first kind of chart that we see quite a bit on the SAT is the pie chart, also known as a circle graph. So you can imagine we draw a circle and then we divide it into sectors. And each sector represents the proportion of the whole that you're looking at. So for instance, if this was, I don't know, um, ice cream flavors. <clears throat> so the, you know, the number of people that like a certain ice cream flavor, we could say that you know 25% like that kind and 45% like another, and then 20% like another, and then what would have to be left? So 70, 20, and then this is not the scale, but 10% like another, right? So you can make some kind of judgment on the percentages and how many people like certain flavors based on the percentages in the graph and the proportions of each wedge. So again, this is this whole thing of percentages and circle graphs is a very common SAT style question. So check out the Math Tactics series; it covers those in some detail because SAT likes asking these kinds of questions. Another kind of graph is a line graph. So you can imagine we draw two axes, we label the axes. So maybe this is labeled months, and maybe this is labeled sales. So we would you know graph our points on this thing and then connect the the dots with some kind of line graph to show the trends over time. Right? That would be a line graph. Whereas a bar graph is very similar except we use bars to show the same kind of information. So again, months and sales. And then maybe for each month we'd have a, you know, alternating bars to show uh, what the sales were for those particular months. And we'd have to read the uh, heights of the bars to tell us how many sales that corresponds to. Whereas here we would just see where the point is on the graph and correspond the month to the sale. A pictograph is a bit strange. It's not very uh, often that we see these say in a math class, but basically it's a way of a visual way of representing a certain amount of information. So let's again use sales and months. So imagine over here we've got our, our months. So January, February, March, April, and then here we've got our sales, but we use symbols to represent sales. So let's use a square because that's going to be easier than using something else. And a square will say represents 100 sales. And then we might see something like this. We may see three squares here, and one here. Might see four here, and we might see like two and a half here. So what does this mean? Well, it means that well, this in this month January we had 300 sales because we had three squares. Here we had 100. Here we had 400, and here we had 250 because we have two and a half. Right? That's the basic way of reading a pictograph. A table might be another way of representing this information. So instead of using symbols, we can just use numbers. So how about something like this? Um, let's label this part Bob and John. And we will divide them into months. Maybe something like this. Just making this data up. So January, February, March, April. And then we would say something like, you know, John had 10, 20, 20, and then 15. And then maybe John had five sales, 10, five. 30. The key would be to determine from the problem what these numbers represented and then answer the question based off whatever it is that they're looking for. The final major kind of uh, graph we might see is a scatter plot. So imagine we collect a bunch of data relating to quantities, so maybe sales and experience or something like that. So we would get a bunch of points and they would be plotted. So notice we can't really use a line graph here because you'd be like connected. It, it's very strange. How would you connect all these things? So what you do is you try to find the best fit line. So the line that best represents this data. So what you might see on the SAT is they'll give you this kind of scatter plot and you have to pick the linear equation, the y equals mx plus b equation that best represents this data based on things like slopes and y-intercepts and basically average values, things like that. So again, check out the SAT Math Tactics series. That has many more examples of charts and graphs questions and the particulars about how to solve them.